Doom Eternal is like chess. Those of you who have played this game extensively will likely know what I mean, but for those who have no idea or barely touched the game, you must think I've gone mad. How can a game about merciless slaughter be even remotely comparable to a highly strategic game? Doom might not require the biggest brain to beat, but you're not playing my first super shotgun adventure anymore. This is all down to the enemies. Every enemy is as tightly and strategically placed as pieces on a chessboard. Additionally, the function of each enemy in game reflects that of an actual chess piece. And in this video, I will run through each individual chess piece and explain how they relate to demons in Doom Eternal. Starting with... The most numerous piece on the board, the pawn. The pawns of Doom Eternal are the demons categorised as fodder. I would also count the Maker Drones as pawns, as they reflect the same characteristics. They are the most numerous and limited in power on Eternal's board. They are at their most deadly, however, when you're focused on something else. Gargoyles are agile and quick. You will be sorely punished for ignoring one at close range. Imps are long-ranged annoyances and will likely take advantage of you being too focused on more powerful pieces present on the board. Lost souls are hardly used because it forgot they existed. And so on. While they are easy to dispose of, you must ensure you keep an eye out for them, just like how if you ignore an enemy player's pawns you'll likely end up losing lots of pieces to them, but if you remain aware of what they're doing you shouldn't be too worried about them. As a collective fodder are good stores of ammo and shield, flame belch and chainsaw are best used on these guys to replenish ammo and shield. I'm not sure if the lack of ammo sentiment is still relevant, but it shouldn't be. The Knights of Doom Eternal are the up close and personal demons. The Prowlers, Pinkies, Spectres, Whiplashes, Barons of Hell, Hell Knights and Dread Knights. I mean, it says Knight right there, so you gotta give me that one. All these demons would much prefer to kill you within an arm's reach. It's still not on top of the food chain, but very deadly. All specialise in putting an immense amount of pressure on the player, and require immediate attention when threatening you. Keeping a distance is advised. And yes, I would consider the Baron of Hell to be a Knight. As looking at fundamentals, it's pretty much a Dread Knight with more health, minus the AOD. Pinkies will charge at you and are only vulnerable from the back. The speed at which they charge at you and requirement to hit them in the back is likely to panic the player, not paying attention to them. The whiplash can stagger the player, destroying their momentum, leaving them vulnerable, and then can quickly move in to finish them off. Likely panic inducing. Definitely annoying. Hell Knights and Dread Knights are the most obvious examples of what I mean. I mean, yeah, it's right there in the name. But they're quick, strong, and can overwhelm you very easily. All of this reflects the nature of the actual chess piece, being highly manoeuvrable with the ability to move over other pieces, but not being able to claim other pieces unless they're at close range. The Rooks of Doom Eternal are the long-range attackers that are ground-based. The Cybermancubus, Mancubus, Carcass, Arachnatron and Revenant. These demons will cause trouble from a distance, but don't necessarily need immediate attention. The relative pressure they put on the player isn't that high, however they do ensure the player never has a moment of rest. They provide long-range protection to knights, increasing the pressure put on by those close-range attackers. The Carcass is long-ranged frustration that isn't much work by itself, however those force fields can increase the effectiveness of any close-range specialist. The Mancubus and by extension the Cyber Mancubus are walking artillery pieces, ready to capitalise on any Slayer standing still. The area of denial toxic sludge fired by the Cyber Mancubus restricts the player's movement, which again makes it easier for the knights on the board to defeat you. Alternatively, the Mancubi can just defeat you themselves when you're dealing with said knight. The Revenant fires lock-on rockets that require you to dash in order to evade them, which isn't always convenient. This is much like how a rook in chess can claim any piece should it be on one of the four standard directions. Due to its range on the board, it's also very good at protecting pieces much further from its position. We move on to the bishops. These are very similar to the rooks, only they attack from the air. And the demons I would categorise as such are the Cacodemon, Pain Elemental and Bloodmaker. We move on to the final piece, the Queen. The most powerful piece on the board, and in Doom these demons are no different. Some Queen pieces require the use of multiple techniques the game teaches you throughout the campaign. Others merely possess an attribute that makes them difficult to deal with. Such is the case of the Archvile, he summons many possessed demons as well as utilising multiple fire-centred attacks, including a shield, which makes it harder to prevent the summoning of demons. The Doom Hunter tests your knowledge of weak spots, having multiple ways in which you could go about defeating him each requiring the use of a specific tool. The Armoured Baron tests your reaction times and accuracy, as well as encouraging the player to finish him off quickly before their armour regenerates. 
The Marauder. The apex demon, the demon that everybody whined about. He tests your movement, reaction times and accuracy. What about the king, I hear you ask? You see, the king was designed to be kept alive, and the Doomslayer doesn't take prisoners. That was so cringy. 